right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to practice with the rigorous definition of a limit. And more precisely, what we would like to show is that the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 minus 1 over n squared is what? Well, intuitively, this should go to 0, and therefore 3 minus 0 should be 3. And again, this is your sequence Sn, and this is your limit S. So what we would like to show is that for all epsilon, again, think the error, uh, there is some threshold capital N, which again I underline just to emphasize that it's capital, um, such that again, for all N, if N is greater than capital N, so once you reach that threshold, then you're at most epsilon away from your limit. Then Sn minus S is less than epsilon. Okay, and the proof of this really goes in two steps, and you have to understand. The first step is just some scratch work to find this capital N, because this is the important thing. Given the error, you have to find some capital N that works. And then the second step is our actual proof. So it's completely normal if it seems that we're doing uh, the same thing twice. But I want to emphasize we're not doing that because the first step is really uh, the scratch work. Okay, so step one, find n. It's like finding Nemo, but for n. And what you would like to do is take this equation and solve it for little n. So again, that's the main idea. Solve Sn minus S less than epsilon for n. What do I mean by that? So consider uh, Sn minus S. Again, what is that? That is the difference between the sequence and your limit. So 3 minus 1 over n squared minus 3. This cancels out, which is usually a simplification, and so that is absolute value of 1 minus 1 over n squared, but remember n is a positive integer, so 1 over n squared, I mean, doesn't even matter here, 1 over n squared is always positive, so the absolute value of minus 1 over n squared is just 1 over n squared. And the point is we want this to be less than epsilon, which again gives you an equation for n which you would like to solve. So what we get is n squared, it's greater than 1 over epsilon, and then just take square roots. And this implies n is greater than square root of 1 over epsilon. You might say, what about the other thing? n is less than minus square root of 1 over epsilon? Remember, n is a positive integer. So, uh, in particular, we don't care about the other inequality because that's just for negative integers. You know, like, um, if n is less than minus square root of blah blah, it means n is negative. Okay, and in particular, notice this suggests to let capital N to be square root of 1 over epsilon. So in other words, our guess is that capital N is just square root of 1 over epsilon. And our goal is to show that this guess works. And again, that's just scratch work. Now we want to do the actual work. So so actual proof. So let epsilon be given, and let capital N to be square root of 1 over epsilon, then 
if n is greater than capital N, then let's look as follows. So we get Sn minus S. Again, the difference between uh, your limit and your sequence and the limit. So 3 minus uh, 1 over n squared minus 3. And essentially what this becomes, absolute value of minus 1 over n squared. And that's 1 over n squared. And we want to show this is less than epsilon. But notice, but if n is greater than capital N, which is square root of 1 over n epsilon, then um, n squared, it's greater than this squared, so 1 over epsilon. So minus 1 over epsilon squared is less than epsilon. So in particular, absolute value of Sn minus S, which is 1 over n squared, becomes less than epsilon. And therefore, we are done. So then, uh, therefore, if you want. Hence, we can just conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of a 3 minus 1 over n squared is actually 3. And then you're done. And again, it seems that it's redundant, but the point is in step one thing, all the steps are not always reversible, but in this case, you show that it doesn't matter, it still works. All right, thank you very much.